Hey, so have you all got your new October edition of L Magazine Fashion? Because I know you all are so fashionable out there. Probably read this from cover to cover, right? It's not a lot of reading. It's mostly all looking. So I have been in, published in page 89. Dun, da, da, da. One page only. It's called Mediums Are the New Therapists. I didn't write it. The reporter is Jacqueline de Twilter George. And she reached out to me for almost a year ago. And my gosh, you guys, this smells so much. I'm not really a smell kind of person, you know, especially, you know, strong smells. Lots of people seem to have that issue. And this has got so many samples of perfumes in it, you wouldn't believe. And they're all competing with each other. I've, I've left it out so that it would be out so that it would start airing out. I don't want to rip the pages out. Besides, it probably smells just as badly because they've been sitting in there for so long. I don't want to rip it apart. But, uh, hmm. Anyway, page 89. Let me go back to it. Now, it's only one page long, which is odd because the amount of work that the reporter did was incredible. When she first talked to me a year ago, her editor told her, that he wanted an article on mediumship. And so she started working on it and she'd already talked to a lot of people before she talked to me. She had, I think, taken a class um, on mediumship. She had talked to some, the spent a lot of time talking to um, a teacher, a medium. She really went into depth. It was months long of research that she had done. And the reason she was given to start on this project is does not appear anywhere in the article so it's it's fascinating how you start off with the story idea and then by the time you're publishing it it's not close they had to have a fact checker come um, contact me this is common in reliable sources uh, articles that have journalistic integrity. New York Times did that with me both times I've been in the New York Times. And so it's it's quite interesting because I don't get to read the article beforehand. I don't I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is what I've said and what the reporter said in questions they've asked me. And we went back and forth over email and over Zoom many times. So it's it really is fascinating how journalists work, uh, real journalists, that is. Um, looking through the magazine, I was surprised that there are a couple really good articles like this. One's on Cesar Chavez's granddaughter, and most everything else is about fashion. And so having these articles like this one in the Cesar Chavez article, are it's a unique chance to get into um to a, an audience that normally would not know about this kind of thing. And I can't see how people would be able to get their L magazine for fashion and perfume samples and see an article called Mediums Are the New Therapists and not want to read that, especially since it's only one page long. And let me see if I can show you this. For trademark reasons, I'm not going to link I don't have, I have the text and everything, but I'm not going to give it to you because I don't want to have any problems with L. But this is the article. And I, my quote starts here and goes to here. So it's a wonderful placement. It's a whole paragraph. It's a lot of words for, for, um, for the skeptic view, even though the article is fairly skeptical. And I'm going to kind of sum it up for you. You can, might want to check it out. It's October, 2023. I've showed you what the cover looks like, like that. I don't know who that woman is, but I, apparently she was in Bridgerton. I was, a, I was a portrait photographer for years, you guys, mainly children. And it's just so weird to see the, the photography. Um, <laughs> very odd. Okay. It's easy when you're starting with beautiful people, right? Photogenic people. So I'm not going to read this to you. But I had a couple highlights of things I thought might be interesting for you. Let me let me pull that up here real quick. 
because I highlighted a couple things that I thought were important to understand. Okay, so the article is called Mediums are the New Therapist. If a seance can solve your pain, does it matter if it's a scam? And by solve, they mean like, you know, putting medicine on it, S-A-L-V-E. So her her line is she talks about seance and i know a lot of people who get readings who go and get your readings um, from mediums don't think of a reading as a seance but it is so it's a it's a modern seance with the lights on it's it's a different style but all of this is mediumship is all seance um and um Sorry to tell you that, but that's just kind of the way it is. So her point is that if mediumship or seances, people go and get the get it done, is it okay for it to be not real? And does it help? I mean, if it if you go and you get helped, then is it okay to have been lied to? that kind of thing. Really interesting. So I'm just kind of giving you that. She says she had to do a lot of research. Like I said, one of the points she makes is that as of 2023, mediumship is everywhere. And it really is. She says that um, some of the research she had done, according to some research group that I've never heard of, they said that that mediumship did weather the economic problems of the pandemic. And I can tell you that is true. They managed to weather it and grow massively. There are mediums, astrologers, um, tarot readers, um, psychics of all kinds everywhere. TikTok just exploded with them. I mean, you you didn't even have to have a website. People just put up a put up a, an account and said, "I'm I'm able to read your palm. Just send me a picture of it or put it on the screen or." Or heck, I don't even need to see your palm. I'll just read it. You know, it was just, and people were throwing money at them. So absolutely, this is massive. Now, the reasons for that, probably because we were in lockdown. A lot of people are spending a lot more time on their on their phones and on the computers. Also, possibly because there was so much um, starvation of uh, human contact. We needed to be in contact with each other. It was a very scary, lonely time. People were, you know, we lost millions worldwide um, from COVID and lots of questions, you know, economic downturns. Am I going to get a job? Is it, are they, are they going to come back? You know, so there's a lot of questions. So mediumship, psychics, all that kind of stuff, astrology just soared. The problem with it was for the medium perspective is, is that there was a lot more competition because somebody could undercut you very quickly. And if you weren't the most pleasant or available um, medium, there was always another medium who was going to take over your clientele. No problem. So if you got a bad review or you said the wrong thing, then people moved on fairly quickly to somebody else because there's always somebody who's going to take on your your um, clientele. So the business of of world of <clears throat> mediumship and and psychic psychics exploded, but each individual who was an established medium probably felt like they suffered. Um, this analysis that the reporter looked into, she says that in 2023, there was over, it reached $2.3 billion in sales, mediumship. I think that's way low because a lot of mediums rely on cash sales, cash apps, uh, PayPal and you know Apple Pay. And those are not going through some sort of um, reporting to, you know, whatever governmental agencies for taxes, you know, here in the United States, it's IRS. I, I'm sure they're not, you know, taking all that money in and reporting every nickel, dime, and quarter. So I think that $2.3 billion is probably closer to like 6 or $7 billion this year. <clears throat> 
I have no facts. I just have anecdotes, but that's what I think is going on. So um, the other thing I wanted to say is that the reporter, she says that she found a few studies. Now she says these aren't good studies. They were small. They were peer reviewed, which is important, but they're very, very small studies of people who had been given a mediumship reading, were in contact with their loved ones and said they felt better afterwards. And I'm not surprised because mediums aren't going to tell you bad things. They're not going to say that your family member is um, never wants to talk to you again. And, you know, they're not going to say anything negative because they want to say positive things because they want you to come back. They'll say, you know, your, your family member might have been a toxic person here, but now they see the error of their ways and they want to apologize for the way they treated you and, and the mean things they said and the, and the behaviors they had that maybe divided you to they're going to say those kinds of things. They're not going to say, um, you know, that they're in pain and that, um, you know, the world is, you know, it's awful over there or anything like that. There are some that will, and that's completely different from the mediumship that I'm used to. There are people who will prey on you um, saying there's a curse on your family and you have to pay up and Oh my gosh, that's, that's really, it's really bad. That's a whole different kind of wing of mediumship. But what I'm talking about is the celebrity kind of mediumship, that kind of stuff. So um, this reporter says that people supposedly have felt better after they've had their reading. And like I said, I believe that's true. She says that there may be additional benefits from talking openly with people uh, who have experienced similar uh, events, you know, similar life, life events, you know, tragedies, uh, sudden death, long drawn out deaths, and so on. And visiting a medium may offer the bereaved an opportunity to apologize, almost like play acting. And that's probably true. I, I totally believe that, you know, writing a letter with your, with your thoughts and your feelings and your, um, and you, what you really think, and then lighting it on fire or throwing it in the water or doing something like that, just therapeutically, I'm sure that's really healthy. Um, speaking out loud, you know, writing a poem, writing in a journal, I think those things are probably really good. And I'm not a grief therapist, so I don't know. I'm not licensed and neither are any of these psychics, but I do know that I think I've felt better talking out loud about issues. And you kind of come to a place in your mind where you're, you feel better about it. You've worked it out. Or if you talk to somebody who's had a ex similar experience, especially if they're very sympathetic and they're listening and they're not trying to interrupt you and say, oh, well, here's what happened to my little, you know, here's what happened in my case. And, you know, that kind of thing. Those people steer away from the people who are very good listeners, like somebody you're paying to listen, like a, a medium. So I get that speaking to somebody else and talking about your grief is probably a good thing. And I like how she says it's like play acting. I think that's really clever. She says that. So. She says that, you know, they're not going to give you negative messages. So people are going to feel like they've gotten something out of it most of the time. Here's what she says that is, is if she starts to get into the meat of this article. She says the industry, the industry, the mediumship psychic industry has little to no ethical govern, governance. And that's a hundred percent true. The ethics are just out the door i've been to many readings where the website says this is for entertainment only and then when you get into the reading there's no entertainment there happening at all it is that's just something a disclaimer on the website for no apparent reason at all except to keep people from being sued i i think they think it's going to save them if if they 
tell somebody something and then that person harms themselves or harms somebody else because of something that was said or doesn't get medical treatment when they should be or whatever. I know this happens because I've got audio and video of it. It is um, egregious. And some of the people that are doing this are the people that are really highly recommended. And it's appalling, really, the, the things that happen, the things people are told that ethically are are wrong. I mean, it's just, you would never tell your best friend some of the suggestions that people tell. I mean, just thinking off the top of my head, I mean, Sylvia Brown was notorious for telling people to break up with the with her boyfriend, even if the boyfriend's sitting right there. And she would say, oh, well, he's cheating on you. Or she would do those kinds of things. Or you should change your job. Go do something else. Or I think you should move. And Sylvia is not the only one who does that kind of thing. It is common for mediums to do, except that they'll say, your great grandfather is saying that you should probably, you know, do these things. And they have no, I mean, it's just like, what? You don't have any knowledge of this. Why would you? Ethics, let me tell you, are rampant. Even the ones you say you trust. It's one thing to go see somebody in the a religious aspect. They have a lot more training or even a really good friend of yours that you're having a conversation with, at least they kind of know you and they can understand, but, mm. okay, going back to the article, she says that the industry has no ethical governance, and that's absolutely true, even when they try, um, and that, and any that does exist is based on the belief that mediums can actually talk to the dead, which is, to put it mildly, up for debate, and there it is right there, is that even when they they say they're trying to be ethical and they're trying to help, there are they're making the assumption that you can communicate with the dead. And there's no skepticism. There's none whatsoever. The only only thing I run into when I talk to the people who believe in mediumship is they'll say, this particular person is a problem. I've had a problem either with them financially because of the scheduling or money or um, they'll say I didn't get anything out of it or they'll say the person didn't um, connect with me really well I didn't feel a lot of um, you know connection to that medium they'll say that kind of thing but they say it's just this medium the other ones are okay and so when you've already got that mindset that this is definitely real, well, I don't know how you could, you know, talk them out of it. There, that's where they are. So ethically, they already believe that it's that it's going to it's real. They just haven't found the right person yet. So that's a little bit of a problem when it comes to ethics again, because you just keep going from one to the next to the next to the next. So the last thing she's kind of saying in this article, and I highly recommend you reading it. I don't think it's online anywhere. At least I haven't been able to find it. It seems to only be in the print version. Is She says that the placebo effect is tremendously powerful. And of course that's true. I mean, placebos are very powerful. And just the fact that you're sitting down having a conversation with somebody who is listening and, and hopefully listening intently and has years of wisdom behind them. Um, and if you find somebody like that who is not trying to get a hook in you, like, you know, schedule you for next week or have you recommend their friends, your friends to them, um, give me money or, you know, power over you somehow, not all mediums charge. And that does not make it right. Because even if they're not charging, they're getting something out of it. So that's a whole nother video for another day. But don't don't go with the just because they didn't charge me, they must be okay. No, it's not about the money only. It's about the power and the influence. So the placebo effect is very powerful. And so what she's saying is these people, they went and she watched people who went through this process of sitting down and talking. And then supposedly their dead family member comes through and they're able to, she's play act and talk to them and 
and, and feel better about it, forgive them or be forgiven or whatever. And the, the issue is, is that the experiments that they're running, and I haven't seen them because she didn't list them, but I suspect that they're not evaluating it over time. They're only evaluating with, you went in and had the reading and then afterwards, how'd you feel about it? And of course, they're going to say they felt great about it, especially if they had a good cry, very therapeutic. They feel so much better talking to somebody who was listening to them. Or they're with a group of people who are very sympathetic and they've been through it themselves. So they're able to relate to your grief. What, and this is kind of where I wrestle with this idea. If it is, if the person does not realize that they've been lied to, if they, if they don't realize that, and that there is that the person they're talking to is play acting just making things up is that is that harmful and i would say yes because i think lying to people is never a good idea i mean it's like the it's like maybe one time out of a hundred is there a good idea to lie to somebody and when you're a, an adult and you're making decisions Let's say, you know, you're of sound mind, not somebody who um, has got severe dementia and you just tell them um, that, you know, you're, you're lying to him by saying, oh, yeah, your, your da um, dad's over here. He'll, you'll see him tomorrow, you know, or, you know, you're lying to them because they have severe dementia, which is super sad. But when you're making a decision and you're an adult and I think that you're owed a certain level of respect that you're not being lied to. Um, it's not like seeing a magician where the person is, you know, performing on the stage and they're lying to you. You know, they're lying to you. They're a magician. I'm talking about meeting up with somebody who's, who's, you don't know they're lying to you. And there's no like wink, wink, nod, nod. Oh, we're just play acting. No, I I, I still think it's very dangerous. And I think it's, what is the, the phrase that um, undue influence? Because even the most skilled psychics, mediums, are not omnipotent and they can easily say something that would influence you one way or the other. And you see this all the time with different psychics. They give advice. Your brother says from the other side that you should, you should do this thing. You should make up with somebody or you should go and you should move away to this area. They offer this kinds of advice. And as I said, they don't really know what's best for you. So it is a form of undue influence, whether they know or not. And ethically, I don't think it's a great idea. If you go into it, like you go to a Halloween festival, it's October here, and you go get a reading from somebody at a Halloween table and you get a, you know, handwriting analysis or you get your palm read or you see a psychic or whatever, the the disclaimer is that you're at a Halloween festival it's a, or a party or something like that. And when you go to look at the the medium's website or the psychic's website, you it becomes fairly clear that what you're looking at is an actor or somebody who's doing this for entertainment. It's a psychic um, entertainment association. The uh, PEA. It's an actual thing where they are people who you hire to be psychics and they, they're called mentalists. My boyfriend's a mentalist, so I know this well. And if you look at their website, 
they're magicians and they're just doing this as like an acting. It's like an act. You can tell. But if you look at the website and it's not say, you know, book me for your bar mitzvah or book me for your birthday party or something like that. And it's um, bereavement and, and that kind of thing. Well, now we're into the world of somebody who's not licensed to deal with grief, who is now um, assisting people in grief. And I think it's dangerous. I think it's very dangerous. You might argue with me and say, I've never had a problem. Well, that's true. Lots of people who um, who drink and drive, they might be able to get home fine and everything is all right. Or they don't become addicted to cigarettes and they still smoke. Or they, you know, there's a lot of that kind of stuff where some people are fine. But let me tell you, I hear from people constantly. And if you want to look at my through my YouTube channel and the articles I've written for Skeptical Inquirer, you'll see there's an awful lot of harm that's going on. So I think this article that sh even though it's just been one page long, I think there's a lot to break down. It's great discussion. I think it's a really great place to to have a conversation. So if you're one of those people who's already tends to be skeptical about mediumship and you want to have better conversations with people who do believe in mediumship, you could start with an article like this because it's raises some really good concerns and raises a lot of really great ethical um, decisions. So L magazine isn't where you would normally think that this would be a great place to go pick up your, your, um, your, uh, you know, reliable source discussion material, you know, it's a fashion magazine after all. But I think this works well. And because it's a fashion magazine appealing to apparently mostly a certain subset of the world, apparently this gets millions of views. They will sell millions of these. Um, somebody's going to pick this up and they're going to read this. And I think that maybe they'll have better discussions. Maybe they'll get a little more knowledge. Maybe they're going to be very angry at me and look me up. I don't know. But all I know is that there's got some smells in here that is just this is powerful. I'm I think I'm going to put this way out of my way, so hopefully it will air out eventually. But check it out. Um, it's a great discussion. If you like this video, please subscribe. Please comment. I love your comments. Please share. Um, and uh, if you would be so kind to hit the little bell that goes ding so that you will know whenever I have I have another article I mean another video uploaded thanks everybody